evening and welcome to the special broadcast I don't like actually speaking when there's such beautiful music so I'm just going to hold my words and listen to the wonderful strains of Vaishnava Janata that we just heard Ustad Bismillah Khan's wonderful family playing for us very soothing sounds after the political noise that we've been subject to for the last many 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 weeks I can't say it's over but it's almost over from varanasi tonight first a privilege to have with us and i want a big round of applause from the banarsis here to welcome and in fact everybody here ustad bismillah khan's family wonderful musicians who have today reminded us that music is beyond politics they were at the center of a political debate but more on that in just a moment at the moment we're just enjoying how beautiful their music is from varanasi tonight on the road to 2014 it's curtains down on campaigning on the program today we'll be asking what this battle came to represent did kashi really become kurukshetra is it really modi versus kejriwal versus rahul gandhi today was the day when rahul gandhi finally decided to arrive in varanasi was that a decision forced by narendra modi in a meeting and above all has this election of 2014 been a watershed election one that has changed the rules of politics in varanasi the world's oldest living city is there a race especially in the last lap to claim some of india's greatest icons from madan mohan malviya to ustad bismillah khan to of course the river ganga those will be some of the things we'll be looking at on this banaras betak tonight we have here of course uh, many different voices the residents of banaras and let's introduce our panel this evening we're joined uh, by uh, a political commentator and political scientist professor ashutosh varsne from the aam aadmi party he used to be one of our best political analysts and he still is but now he's a neta he's yogendra yadav of the aam aadmi party amir raza hussain we know him as a theater person but why is he in varanasi he is actually here here to support advent kejriwal but supporting other candidates in different parts of the country so it's candidate specific for amir raza hussain and uh, finally we have uh, sadanand dhume he is of course uh, an author and a commentator and also associated with a major think tank uh, in the united states of america from delhi tonight our national politicians joining us from the congress abhishek singhvi from the bjp chandan mitra and as we said we also have ustad bismillah khan's family and we'll be talking to them as well yogendra ji aap se shuru karti hu before i uh, uh, get abhishek and chandan in who are not with us here in banaras i wish they could be it's almost over It's Thank almost God. over. Thank I, God. I yeah. I I I want to say the same. I've lost my my voice so I don't know how all of you do it. What did this election come to represent? What is the battle for Varanasi where we are today in this beautiful Kabir Math which is more than 600 years old? What did it come to represent? For me this was the battle for the very idea of India. I've said it again and again. Um mm. and we are fortunate that this battle took place in Varanasi which in many ways is a cradle of our civilization. It's a battle of uh, for the idea of India in two or three senses, uh, but the deepest sense is that of the diversity that our culture represents, that our civilization represents. And I think this election, in a larger way, was about two different visions of India. Mm. One vision of India, which wants to flatten all the diversity of this country, which sees unity only in uniformity. and there is the other deeper vision i can look at uh, rabindranath tagore here i can look at the statue of mahatma gandhi right here within a few feet uh, the that vision was a vision which celebrated the diversity of this country now i take your reference to be to the bjp so is it fair to say that this battle for you was the aam aadmi party versus the bjp and the congress became marginal in banaras of course it did uh, in banaras and rahul gandhi's coming made no difference Well, it's not for me to say, but uh, I don't think uh, it made much of a difference. That's my sense. Okay. Uh, but you are a much better judge. When his show was on, I was doing another show, so it's, it would be wrong for me to say I saw his show and I've come to this conclusion. Yes. You would be a much better judge of these things. L let me take that to Abhishek Singhvi and Chandan Mitra, and then we'll hear from the voices here. Uh, uh, Abhishek Singhvi, uh, is Rahul Gandhi essentially returning the Amethi fire? If Mr Modi had not gone to Amethi would he have even been here this morning you know a number of congress workers i met alongside his own road show 
said he kept it for too late. Is, has that been the problem of this entire election, that the Congress got, lost its way, that Mr. Modi set the terms, that Mr. Modi would set the agenda and then the Congress would react? That depends on which party you belong to and how you view it. There is a very equally strong, if not strong, Mr. Modi, with his repetitive style, was actually peaking too early or trying to peak too early and the reverse was being alleged against him that he's going to find it difficult to sustain the campaign. Number two, in fact, there were a lot of feeling that he has not in fact been able to sustain the hype, the, uh, the dynamism, the speed and the momentum of the campaign. So it's very important to peak at the right time. I don't think when you come to the last day of campaigning and you give it so much importance, and you are actually peaking at the right time to call it too late. After all, Mr. Uh, Ahilesh Yadav cannot be said to be coming to his own state too late. Obviously, the contrary viewpoint is that Mr. Rahul Gandhi was giving it supreme importance. He was keeping it for the back. And don't remember, don't forget that this is the, uh, the, the, the few seats in the last phase of election. So there's no question of peaking too early as far as Varanasi is concerned. Also, I think, I, I mean, I'm surprised that I'm agreeing with almost every word which my good friend Mr. Yeah, you agreed with Yogendra Yadav, but he didn't consider you competition. Yeah, well, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's yeah, a cardinal you know, sin uh, to be overconfident in an electoral battle. Uh, you have two j people who have a national uh, image and uh, uh, name, Mr. Modi and Mr. Kejriwal, no doubt. But that is precisely why they should never underestimate the local person. This election is certainly about the idea of India. It is also about a contrast between those who parachute temporarily to forget Varanasi forever thereafter. Mr. Modi is the parachuter. Mr. Kajriwal is the follower. In his own statement, he will follow Modi wherever he goes. Neither has his heart or feet into Varanasi, its ethos, its local good. As opposed to that, you have a six or seven time MLA uh, who has no, who's a local boy, who knows everything local. And he's been going to be there for the roads, for the sewerage, for the local issues. So Abhishek, those I'm going to interrupt you because we're on limited time here. Yogendra Ji, I'll allow you a brief rebuttal and then Chandan Mitra. Yogendra. Just one thing. My point was not just about numbers. That will be decided on the 16th. Yeah. My point was in which way does Mr. Rai represent an opposition to Mr. Modi's idea of India? After all, he's from the BJP, which is the opposition. He's what? formally with the BJP. He was three times MLA of the BJP. In which way does he represent an op a new syncretic deep idea of India? That's okay. my point. Let's park that also, thought. Also, he's not actually from Banaras. Who? Yeah. Ajay Rai. Yeah, okay, Amir, one minute. I just MLA. want to get the politicians in and then I want sure. to come to the but others. But he's been an so MLA Chandan from must, outside the city. So let's, let Chandan have a say and then we'll open it up. Chandan, there's something very peculiar going on. Rajnath Singh is suddenly saying... The election commission must ensure that the elections are free and fair. When in India did we begin to doubt that elections are free and fair? Why is the BJP in the last lap? You may have your differences with the district magistrate here. You may make a solid argument there depending on who you talk to. There could be two views on that. But to question the fairness of the democratic process in India, they, you know, there might be aberrations, there might be conflict zones. I'm not talking about those. But on average, we are proud of our free and fair elections. Why is the BJP questioning this? The Congress is saying this is a sign of... I'm afraid I've lost, lost you. I'm afraid I've lost, uh. lost you. I'm saying uh. why are you attacking... Why are you questioning whether the elections are going to be free and fair, Chandra? No, no. You see, the point which Mr. Rajnath Singh is making... And I think it entirely agreed, I think everybody who has uh, been in this fray, including myself, I have felt that the level playing field that the election commission is expected or is duty bound to create um, for all the contesting candidates, the Congress, BJP, CPI, CPM, independent, regional party, whatever. That level playing field was not created and certainly it was tilted against the BJP, the goalposts were shifted after the match had begun and there seems to be a certain, you know, um, I would say uh, uh, some kind of subjective judgment coming from the um, election commission this time which is distressing 
as you know, the election commission is a divided house. One of the commissioners Chandan, has admitted. Are you saying, Chandan, the beyond the district magistrate? Admitted. Chandan, I'm trying to ask you a question. Are you, are you saying that beyond the district magistrate, these elections nationally are not free and fair? Is that the BJP position? No, no, no. In a wild and you know, widespread allegation that the election was not free and fair, but some acts, acts of the election commission. In Varanasi in particular, I have been at the receiving end of the election commission's complete indifference and the kind of bowing to the state uh, authorities in my constituency. So I know that it has not been uh, even handed that uh, some people have benefited out of the election commission's indifference. They have overlooked many things. They have proactively done things such as in Varanasi which uh, were not fair to the BJP. So yes, we are unhappy about the whole thing. I am not saying the election commission has been, you know, a biased right. across the board. I want to, I want to come in the, here and, the cumulative I want to come in here and basically say, Chandan, I am sorry, I am going to actually uh, speak over you because we have to move on. Uh, in many ways, so many things have changed in this election. Uh, a major party has gone on a dharna against the election commission. Uh, in many other ways, uh, uh, people have seen the rise of Mr. Modi and the rise of Mr. Kejriwal, while they may have nothing ideologically in common, uh, as a backlash to uh, an elite stranglehold, stranglehold over India. Uh, uh, there's something very interesting going on. Uh, for the first time, it's fashionable to talk about development and only development. It's, it's, it's actually not cool to overtly, for a politician to overtly talk about caste and religion. So many different things have changed. Sadhana, uh, looking at these elections, do you believe that this is an election like none other that we've seen in decades? Absolutely. I think this is the most significant election since 1977. And why do you say that? I think in 1977 really was a question of whether India was going to be a democracy or not, was it whether Indian democracy was going to survive. Um, but this is a turning point in another way. By now we can take for granted the fact that India is a democracy. But the idiom of this election has really been, as you said, an idiom of development. And I'd like to take issue briefly with Yogendra on this idea of, you know, the idea of India, which is a sort of horse that we flog repeatedly. You know, from my view as a distant observer, I don't see the idea of India as a pluralistic nation really being threatened. Uh, I, was, I was struck the other day by a photograph of Mr. Modi touching the feet of this 114-year-old colonel from the, from the Indian National Army. And I think that for, for me that, that reaffirmed the idea of India as a pluralistic nation. Yeah. So the emphasis may be different and one party may say that I will, uh, I will turn to people who are seen as, who put the Indianness of their identity first on that And you believe Mr. Modi has done that? I think that the touching the feet of that 114 year old colonel was precisely that. Amir Raza Hussain, Modi's formulation is India first, religion second. <laughs> as per Sadanand, that is how it should be. So when Yogendra or even Abhishek Singhvi and this they have in common talk about the idea of India being under siege and that's why for them this election is actually as significant as it is. What do you say? No, no, I, I don't think anybody has a doubt about uh, India first. The point is that it's so clear and I'm amazed that people are not able to see it. It's so clear that this whole development agenda is a makota. And behind this mask is this huge caste politics being played, communal politics being played. But isn't it being played by everybody? No, no, maybe, maybe, maybe it's being played, but nothing as uh, uh, well, if that's the word to use, as Mr. Modi has done. The divisive politics which Mr. Modi has, has brought to this country in this election is amazing. The arrogance, the, the macho uh, uh, attitude of uh, people all over the country, voters all over the country, and especially the BJP all over the country. Mm. This whole aggression mm. which we are seeing today, it, it's incredible. There's aggression, there's aggression in, in speeches, there's aggression. And you know, where is the developer? We are not talking about Sadhana, development. quick response and I want to get Professor Varshan in. I mean, are you made your... Yeah. No, I, I, fundamentally we, we look at politics differently. I think politics really is about what you say. There's no such thing as Mukota. It's not about what you If do. a politician goes and campaigns based on development, it is a campaign about development. No, but he hasn't campaigned on development. Of course he has. Look no, at no, all no, his speeches. No, 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 no. I, if, we, if, we, if we look at Modi's speeches in the last six months, I mean, he, right now he's talked about 
the kind of uh, refugees we should ex uh, uh, accept from uh, coming across the border. Okay, let me get Professor you know. Varshney in and then I'll come back to the politicians <coughs> in just a minute. So, you me, wrote a piece called Modi the Moderate. And, and you know, I, what happens today is that... Uh, People have to be labelled, you know, so polarised has our environment become. Uh, I actually find that very different from the previous elections I have covered. That even today, you know, today you have to stand up and take a side. It's almost become like that. And if you try and uh, apply different nuances to different sides, you're immediately uh, labelled a traitor by the other side. Now, my question is, what did you mean by Modi the moderate? Well, that particular claim was a limited one, uh, limited to the campaign themes. Um, and uh, I highlighted the fact that on three uh, grounds he's departing from uh, Hindu nationalism or the core of Hindu nationalism. Mm. The first was, and two of which are very important here in this discussion, um, the um, argument about the Hajj in Bihar and UP mm. and then the, um, the uh, blog on Malana, uh, Malana Azad on his birthday then, uh, consistent with that touching of uh, Colonel Nizamuddin's feet, uh, mm. I was present at, the, uh, mm. at that rally actually two mm. days ago. Mm. Um, in, his, in his overt campaign, uh, in his explicit messages, the point about Bangladesh...